Arizona says time's up. Arizona is waiting no longer for empty federal promises about securing our borders. Our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before. There will be a coordinated effort to safeguard our transportation systems and to secure the border so that we're better able to protect our citizens and welcome our friends. We said we'd enforce the borders. The American people didn't believe us. They don't believe us because of our failure in Katrina, our failure in Iraq, our failures in reigning in corruption and out of control spending. So we tried and we failed. And I appreciate the president's efforts. He comes from a border state too. And what we've learned is that the American people want the borders enforced. We should continue the work of fixing our broken immigration system to secure our borders and enforce our laws and ensure that everyone who plays by the rules can contribute to our economy and enrich our nation. Well, that's just a sample of the federal promises, and apparently Arizona got tired of waiting for federal action, and now the state's new immigration law is causing a firestorm. Sheriff Paul Babu serves in Pinal County, Arizona, and supports the new law. Right. Why? Sheriff Babu joins us live. Good evening, sir, and uh, why do you evening, support Greg. this new state law? Well, crime literally is off the charts here in Arizona, that we have some of the highest crime statistics in, in America, and where officers uh, being assaulted, officer-involved shootings, carjackings, home invasions, literally, uh, in the absence of federal action, our state is now taking action, and it's a welcomed action and step uh, by us who serve in law enforcement. Well, we could go back well beyond uh, former President Clinton when he was in office and find federal leaders who have said we've got to secure our borders. Um, I take it, do, do you not think our federal government is going to secure the borders? Have you given up or, uh, or, or not? Not at all. Not at all. What, what we've had is a lack of uniformity here, even locally. We've had a, an evolution, if you will, uh, in local leaders and even in law enforcement, where we have always uh, bought into this idea that, hey, this is a federal problem, and we can no longer afford to ignore that. Uh, crime in, in my county, where we have a third of our population is Hispanic, Latino, I have 200 of my staff that are, and we're going to apply this new law uh, without profiling anyone. Just last month, you, Greta, we had, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, I interrupted you. Last month, we had 64 pursuits just in one of our patrol regions, and that, that's where a, a vehicle fails to yield for uh, our lights going on and uh, sirens blaring, and they take off and speed up in high-speed pursuits, running red lights intentionally causing traffic wrecks and this is to not just avoid the police uh, but their tactics have changed they're always armed and this has resulted in, in numerous people being killed in traffic wrecks in, in my county and who are these people that are fleeing from law enforcement these are smugglers not only of drugs but of humans and uh, they're trying to get to metro phoenix and so right now it's it's reached an epidemic proportion here in arizona and this is where you have sheriffs like myself police chiefs that are calling for uh, what Senator McCain and Kyle have asked is 3,000 soldiers to the border. And until we literally stop the unseemingly uh, flow of illegals coming in, it's, it's like a hamster wheel. We're just going to keep chasing our tail here. And, and we can't, we would never ask for actual troops to the border if, if we could handle this on our own, and we can't. So I take it you would prefer, in a best-case scenario, that you're, or you're, you didn't even have to handle this, that the federal government would step in and actually would handle it, would actually secure the borders. Would that be something you would prefer to having your department handle this? That's part of it, but I can tell you that uh, every component, and that's the beauty of the McCain plan, it, it brings together federal agents, it brings together state and county and local law enforcement all together, troops at the border, continue building the fence that President Obama had suspended, and uh, all of this working in partnership, because over half of the illegals coming into America, this is why you're seeing us take action, they come into Arizona, and uh, enough is enough. You said that you wouldn't do profiling. How, how can you avoid doing profiling, or how do you know that you won't do profiling? 
Well, I'll give you an example. Just last night, we had uh, deputies Tabor and Miller uh, go on a, a traffic stop. They stopped somebody not because of the color of their skin, but because they were uh, breaking a traffic law. They were speeding. So the deputy turned around, uh, pulled the traffic stop, but the, the driver pulled into a, a, a residential driveway. That, the operator of the vehicle immediately got out, which is an alert to an officer. The deputy uh, approached him and, and said, hey, what's going on? The suspect said, hey, uh, there's nobody in the car, but then took off on, on foot. The deputy uh, stayed with the vehicle, had seen the trunk actually pop open open and two deputies approached the vehicle and surprise in a four Taurus there were nine other people including two in the trunk now that's what we call reasonable suspicion or a clue in law enforcement so we would take any lawful action we normally do here in America we trust our police officers with the authority that if, say you committed a crime uh, Greta or any citizen that we have this awesome authority to suspend somebody's constitutional rights and freedoms we also have the lawful authority to literally use lethal force and take somebody's life and and yet here we're questioning the fact that we can't build the components that are necessary to get to reasonable suspicion and probable cause and I would submit to you and, and all of our citizens that we do this on every call we go on whether we determine if there's criminal action and, and we need to make an arrest or if it's a civil matter or there's there's many times there's no lawful uh, action that we take sheriff thank you sir and good luck sir Thank you, Greta. Okay, first it was Arizona and now Utah. Utah Republican State Representative Stephen Sandstrom has an illegal immigration bill of his own. He joins us live. Good evening, sir. And uh, why are you introducing, I, I guess you're in the draft uh, stage, but why are you drafting legislation that uh, is similar to that of Arizona? Well, good evening, Greta. It's uh, good to be on the show. Uh, right now it's actually imperative that the state of Utah act aggressively with the same talk same type of legislation that we have in Arizona because in the past when Arizona has tightened the noose around illegal immigration so to speak uh, we've seen an influx of illegal aliens leaving the state of Arizona and coming directly to Utah uh, because Utah is seen as a magnet state we've seen a, we're seen as being light on illegal immigration here um, what's the reception in, in Utah? Um, I mean, are, are people actually, I mean, I can understand why the border states, uh, uh, they're, they're, you know, they've been dealing with the issues of, of crime and drugs for quite some time, but uh, Utah is a little bit distant from the border. Are you actually feeling some of the illegal immigration in your state? Uh, we certainly are, Greta. Here in the state of Utah, we border um, to the south uh, uh, with Arizona, and we are seeing the same type of criminal activity here. Uh, for instance, um, over 50,000 of the children in the state of Utah have had their identities stolen uh, by illegal aliens uh, for job-related um, uh, felonies. We've also seen a huge increase in criminal activity with gang-related violence, uh, drug-related violence, all attributed to illegal immigration here in our state. Do you, do you worry? Because, you know, this, I mean, our, our country, you know, we, we want to, you know, protect our citizens. We want to ferret out crime. We want to prosecute crime. And we also want to make sure that, you know, we adhere to our Constitution. Do you worry that there will be a infringement uh, of constitutional rights or there will be civil rights violations? Do you worry that with the statute you are drafting? You know, I'm not worried about that happening because, uh, as the good sheriff just indicated, when you're stopped for a traffic stop, uh, there has to be probable cause to pursue any type of uh, arrest. And if somebody stopped here in the state of Utah and they do not have a driver's license, they do not have a, say, a resident alien card, and they do not speak English, that may establish probable cause. Uh, the last thing I would want to see happen here in the state of Utah is have uh, racial profiling take place, it, uh, specifically where people are looked at for the color of their skin. That, that's just not the case. So I take it if someone standing on the street corner and doing absolutely nothing sinister and nothing wrong, nothing suspicious, that uh, the, the statute you draft would forbid a police officer simply to step up and say, you know, show me you're a citizen. I, I, is, is that a fair description yeah, that, of what that, you intended with your statute? 
It, it certainly is, Greta. The, that would be the case. We do not want people to live in fear. People feel like just because of the color of their skin or that they might have an accent that they may be targeted. The idea is to give law enforcement another tool so if they have that probable cause, they may ask for immigration status because we are getting overrun here in the state of Utah, uh, just like we, it's just like the state of Arizona. Question, no. It just occurred to me, if, if you go up to someone and the person, you, you question the person and you're, you're satisfied the person hasn't committed a crime, you let the person go or do you ask the added question, what's your citizenship? I think at that point you let the person go. Uh, you need to be engaged in some type of activity that would raise the level of suspicion by that police officer to further ask the question. And simply but if the person uh, being has in this... Done so if if the person has done something, then enough to make an arrest, you can make an arrest regardless of the person's a citizen or not a citizen at that point, right? Oh, sure you would. Yes, of course. So I guess that I'm having, I mean, uh, I mean you can make an arrest uh, without, I mean, I mean someone, someone can be arrested without even asking a citizenship question. Uh, yes, you could be arrested without the citizenship question, of course. And, of course, I mean, also a green card as well. So I guess I'm having a hard yeah. time understanding, now that I think this through a little bit, if someone, if someone is doing something suspicious, you go up and you find out the person uh, is free and clear of something, you don't make an arrest at that point. But do you ask that question, are you a citizen, and you say no? Yeah, well, if, if they're not a citizen, then at that point, um, and they're not here legally, I think that's the key, then we would definitely say um, that they could be arrested at that point even if it was established that you were not committing another crime if you were a question uh, for some reason uh, other than uh, just because you happen to you know, be Hispanic, let's say. And, and let me add that I say citizen, I also mean if, I mean if you have a green card, you have a right to be here as well as besides being sure. a citizen, I, so that I'm, you know, make sure that I'm clear. State Representative, thank you, sir.